Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, guys. Stay so with me. Shalom. And today we're going to be talking about the reason for the seasons. The reason for the seasons. Yep, no, so I put an S on the end of that. I noticed that. Because we're talking about Christmas, mm -hmm. we're talking about Hanukkah, and we're talking about Kwanzaa in this video. So all three of them have a reason, all three of them go together? Um, kind of, or separate. And the better way to think about it, they, they are a way of separating us in these end times especially and we're going to get into why what's the purpose of the separation what's the purpose of the season in the first place okay why were they instituted getting a little bit into when were they instituted and what effect they're having on people in these end times okay now for those of you guys who are new to this channel, I would advise you to subscribe and go ahead and hit that bell notification button because there are those who want to keep you from the knowledge of the scripture. Yeah, and one of the things that um, subscribing always does is it lets YouTube know that you like this kind of information and others might also. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. They are thinking, talking about the YouTube algorithm is acting under the impression that people just don't want to know what the Bible actually says. Mm -hmm. And so when this information is presented to them, they have kind of been blocked from it. Right. Especially if you're not subscribed. That's probably why you're just now hearing about this channel, even though we have been making videos since 2015. Mm -hmm. We have about a thousand videos up on scripture. And if this is the first time you've uh, heard about this channel again, I ask you to subscribe. There are forces that are working against you and the truth. Yeah. And one of the things that I personally like about this channel is that you talk about those forces. Um, we bring to knowledge, you know, those forces that are trying to hinder us. And you actually, you know, tell us what to do about them. Yeah, this is uh, spiritual warfare. Like Paul said, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities mm -hmm. and powers. And we do talk about those powers and we get into a little bit of the principalities like Stacy is referring to. But anyway, we're going to get into this class looking in First Maccabees chapter one. OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to look just at the highlights of this chapter. We're going to look in 2nd Maccabees and we're going to look in some other places in the Bible as we pull out verses and facts about these seasons that we're in now. Okay. So we're looking over here, like we said, 1st Maccabees chapter 1 and we're coming out of the Common English Bible and we see verse 1 there is talking about Alexander the Great. Okay. He was the one who defeated Darius, King Darius at the start of this particular empire mm -hmm. you can actually read all about him in the book of daniel when it's talking about those beasts there this chapter starts off talking about his reign and then talks about how he fell sick and turned over his kingdom to his cronies and those that were following him but the real man of interest in this chapter, as far as we're concerned, is this Antiochus Epiphanes. I've heard that name before. He's the one who is attributed to the first abomination of desolation. Right. And that's what we're actually going to see in this chapter, what that abomination was. Okay. Matter of fact, would you start there reading there at verse 10? All right. From these descendants sprouted a sinful root, Antiochus Epiphanes. He was a son of King Antiochus, and he had been brought up in Rome as a hostage. Antiochus Epiphanes began to rule in the year 137, according to the calendar of the Greek kingdom. Now, it should be noted, you know, especially for those who's trying to study biblical history and compare it to man's history, they, the numbers don't always match up. Because the Bible, when it gives numbers, is really only talking about biblical history. And when you try to compare that to man's history, um, especially when you're talking about um, Antiochus Epiphanes and his actions and Alexander the Great's, if you don't look at the effects that their actions had on our father's people specifically, you can end up with misaligned dates sometimes. Mm -hmm. okay. But anyway, we cover that in another video. Let's go on to verse 11. 
At that time, some renegade Israelites emerged. These people went against their ancestral laws and encouraged many other Jews to join them. They spoke up saying, let's make an agreement with the Gentiles around us because many horrible things have happened to us since we separated ourselves from them. So look at what's happening here. Mm. You have some renegade Israelites. Renegade Israelites. These are people who had no respect. Like it says there, they had disregard for the laws, mm. for the commandments. They had no respect for the commandments. Didn't bother to keep the commandments. And so what they decided to do was actually go over to the Gentiles and make a league with them. Right. You actually see this going on today. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, what comes to mind is, you know, we hear about uh, Kanye and... What's the other guy? Kyrie. Yeah, those guys in the news a lot. And the people like Charles Barkley and and Shaquille O'Neal who are doing similar to what we hear about here. Mm -hmm. These are people who don't necessarily follow the rules of the Bible, but yet are put in positions where they can have influences on the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And you notice that their influence is to make a league with the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. They kind of want us to all just get along, as they say, mm -hmm. especially from the uh, Barkley and O'Neill camp. They kind of want Kyrie and Kanye to just forget about what they're talking about and just ignore the facts just so we can all get along. Right. Well, this is what was going on back there. As we begin the story of Maccabees, but what should be noted here is that these players have a disregard for the law. Yeah, I think the word that sends out is the laws. You know, it doesn't say the rules or the traditions. It says the laws. And I think that 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 says a lot. Yeah, because what we're going to find out here is that this Maccabean war was all about the laws and was centered around and won by those who wanted to actually keep the laws. Mm -hmm. This is important in the end times because of what we see like over in Revelation chapter 12 and verse seven, 17, how there is once again coming a war on those who want to keep the laws. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, would you go ahead and read that? So the dragon was furious with the woman and he went off to make war on the rest of her children on those who keep God's commandments and hold firmly to the witness of the Messiah. So this is what we have coming here. We have a war, if we're not already in it, a war on those who keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. So that lends importance to this book of Maccabees because it kind of shows what they're going to do, right. how they're going to fight this war. We're not going to cover this book. This whole book, there's actually four books of Maccabees, but we're only really going to talk about two different chapters in this class. So let's go on to verse 12. The proposal pleased their fellow Jews. These are other people who didn't want to keep the laws in the first place are now about to follow these lawless individuals as they go make a league with the Gentiles. Some of them eagerly went to King Antiochus, who gave them permission to start living by the laws of the Gentiles. Wow. Yeah. So basically saying you don't have to follow the laws of the Bible. This, you can actually just go in and be Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Consequently, they built a gymnasium in Jerusalem following Gentile custom. So here we are building a gymnasium full of athletes, no right. doubt. Right. The, the thing about their gymnasium and the way that got started is an interesting story, or maybe it's not so interesting, is how they were exercising in the nude. Mm. That's what the word gymnasium basically refers to, is them exercising in the nude. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, whereas now, you know, we just use skimpy bathing suits or whatever. They was <laughs> flat out naked back then. But anyway, let's go on. They even took steps to remove the marks of circumcision, utterly abandoning the Holy Covenant. They joined with Gentiles and gave themselves over to an evil course. So this is why it was important for them to be exercising naked, one will argue, is so they can see their nakedness and see if they were actually Gentiles or if they were under the covenant or not, if they had been circumcised or not. Mm -hmm. So while they come to the gymnasium and start flexing their muscles, there are those who are looking down and identifying them as 
Israelites. Right. And so these rebellious Israelites went as far as to undo somehow their circumcision. Right. Mm -hmm. Hide it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The way the story goes here is that they kind of made artificial coverings so that you couldn't tell that they were circumcised or not. Wow. Okay. Plastic surgery? Anyway, <laughs> let's go. On. When Antiochus felt that his own kingdom was fully established, he determined also to take control of the land of Egypt so that he could rule over both kingdoms. So that section kind of just gets into some of the other things Antiochus was doing. But we're going to drop down here to after he had conquered Egypt, looking at verse 20. After he conquered Egypt, Antiochus returned in the year 143. He went up to Israel and entered Jerusalem with a strong force. Yeah, this is a very interesting story um, of what all happened back there in this Maccabean period. Mm -hmm. With arrogance, he went into the sanctuary. He took the gold altar, the lampstand for the light, and all its equipment. Now, you know, we did a video not too long ago talking about the Ark of the Covenant. Right. And, you know, every time we talk about the Ark of the Covenant, people always want to bring up this guy named Ron Wyatt mm -hmm. that not only found the Ark of the Covenant, but he said claims to have found Noah's Ark as well. Right. Same guy. Same guy. <laughs> thing, thing, thing about it, you know, you have to discount and throw out a lot of scripture if you want to actually believe what he's saying, mm -hmm. including this one right here, which says that this Antiochus Epiphanes took the golden altar, the lampstand for the light and the other equipment. Right. Ron Wyatt claims that all of this stuff was with the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. which is in clear contradiction. Mm -hmm. So if so, it all boils down to who do you want to believe? Do you want to believe? Ron Wyatt was like he said, he had all the luck in the world. He's discovering the Ark of the Covenant and Noah's Ark both. Right. Because no, from my understanding, there's nowhere in scripture where it says that um, Israel went back and retrieved all this stuff. Absolutely. They paraded it around Rome and still in the Vatican somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Ark of the Covenant was hidden in a rock way long time ago back in Jeremiah's time. So by the time we get to this Maccabean period, the Ark of the Covenant is long gone, mm -hmm. but they still have the golden altar. They still have the lampstand and all of that stuff still in use. Because you, you don't hear about it. The Ark of the Covenant? Right. Yeah. Back before Nebuchadnezzar took the golden utensils into his kingdom, Jeremiah had already mm -hmm. hid. He had already hid it. He had already hid the Ark of the Covenant and he had already hid the tent. But the other utensils still remained and they ended up in Babylon and then they ended up giving them back to the Israelites to put back in the temple. Mm -hmm. And so these are the same instruments here that's being talked about in what did it say up there? The 140th year of the Greek Empire. Yeah, because you would think that if he took the spoons and the bowls and the vessels, he would definitely have taken the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, but, you know, according to Scripture, Jeremiah had already right. hid it in the rock. Right. But my point here is that there was separation between the Ark of the Covenant and this golden lampstand. But according to Ron Wyatt, they were still together. So, mm -hmm. like I said, you have to discount. You have to get rid of a whole lot of Scripture. You have to say that Exodus is not real. You have to say that Jeremiah is not real. The... Uh, lives of the prophets you have to throw away those books you have to throw away this book of maccabees all just to believe what he's saying is true right but anyway we'll leave that up to you let's mm -hmm. go on verse 22 he also took the table that was used for the sacred bread drink offering cups bowls gold censers a curtain crowns and the gold decoration on the front of the temple he stripped it all. So here, like we said, all of this stuff is still in possession of the Israelites during the Maccabean period while the Ark of the Covenant was long gone, long time ago. Mm -hmm. But let's go on. He took silver, gold, and costly equipment. He took every hidden treasure he could find. Yep. Wow. Took them down into Rome, and apparently they had a big parade where they paraded all of this stuff down the streets of Rome. That's so, like I said, it's so arrogant because, you know, he's taking the holy vessels of the Father and 
I don't know. This just sort of bothers me in some kind of way. Yeah, well, it's the same thing that Nebuchadnezzar did. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't take it by force. The king at the time actually gave them over to him freely, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, let's go on. Taking it all, he went back to his own land. He committed murder and spoke very arrogantly. Yep, so they took it. So all of this stuff is in Rome. It's not with the Ark of the Covenant. But anyway, let's go on. Every community in Israel grieved deeply. Rulers and elders groaned. Young women and men became faint. The woman's beauty faded. Every bridegroom was saddened, and intended brides sat mourning at the chambers. Even the land shook for his people, and all of Jacob's house was clothed with shame. Yeah, so, and it should be noted that this started with these people who decided that they were going to abandon our father's laws and were going to go make league with the Gentiles. So, renegade means sort of like rebellious. Yeah, these were rebel rebellious individuals who who did this. And this is where this kind of all started. They, you, one could infer that they were living in peace up until that point. Mm -hmm. You know, they might not have had all of the luxuries of the Gentiles and they were complaining about that. But, you know, the Gentiles came in and gave them gymnasiums. Now look at what all they're getting. Right. They're grieved deeply. They're groaning. Their beauty has faded. You know, um, there's nothing but mourning after they have taken all of these instruments into Rome. But it gets worse. It it's, says even the lamb was in mourning as well. Yeah. So that was so that was an earthquake. It sounds mm -hmm. like to me. Mm -hmm. But let's go on. Like I said, it gets worse. Two years later, to collect tribute from the Judean cities, King Antiochus sent his chief officer who came to Jerusalem with a large army. The agent spoke peaceably. And the Jews believed him, but he was deceitful. Without warning, he attacked the city, dwelt it a brutal blow, and killed many Israelites. So here again, these people are trusting in these Gentiles, letting them come into the city, letting them come in peaceably and all of that. And then all of a sudden, they turned on them and started making war, just started slaughtering and killing them unannounced without being provoked or anything. Mm -hmm. He plundered the city. He set fires within, destroyed its houses, and tore down its protective walls. Yep, just like in the book of Leviticus, just the curses of leaving the law. Mm -hmm. This is some of the stuff that we're told would happen when we started to abandon the law. Mm -hmm. His forces took women and children as prisoners and seized livestock. After all of this, the agents forced fortified David's city with a very strong wall and powerful towers, and it became their fortress. So they then turned Jerusalem into their own personal fortress. They didn't pretty much take in the city. And like we said, this is the first chapter in all of the four books of Maccabees. This is where it all starts here. Mm -hmm. They're going to go through a very intense war here over the course of, you know, these four books. But again, this is where it all started. Now they've taken they've taken all of the gold, they've taken all of the silver, they've taken all of the instruments, and now they've taken the whole city and turned it into their own place. They've burned all of the buildings, they burned all of the houses down, all because these people wanted to make a league with the Gentiles, mm -hmm. which is kind of where we're at now. Mm -hmm. You know, people we're living in this time of so-called peace. We see signs of war already, but we're living in this time of so-called peace where the Gentiles are speaking peaceably, even flattering those who now would forsake the law. Mm -hmm. But like we learned earlier, there is a war that's coming and it's going to look similar to what this one did, I believe. But mm -hmm. let's go on. They stationed simple and moral people there and these soldiers held down their position. So they put more Israelites who re were rebellious. Sinful means that they was rejecting the law mm -hmm. breaking the law they put them in charge which is kind of where we're at now we put those who are willing to break the law in the highest positions even in the highest positions of the church mm -hmm. in most churches that you go to the pastor is going to be preaching against obedience to the law and if he ever reads his bible and realizes that he is supposed to be keeping the law they will get rid of him and they will find somebody else to put in that position they stocked up with weapons and food, collected the spoils of Jerusalem, and stored them there. 
they were a great menace. Talking about these Gentiles. And again, we're going to see this happen here again. They ambushed the sanctuary. They were evil opponents of Israel at all times. And of course, Israel would have been those who are trying to keep the law. Mm -hmm. Its inhabitants shed innocent blood all around the sanctuary. And they even polluted the sanctuary itself. It's going to talk about how they actually polluted the sanctuary. Of, you see, now they're spreading blood all around, mm -hmm. but they're actually going to pollute the sanctuary intentionally. Because of them, those who lived in Jerusalem fled. The city became a dwelling place for strangers. She was like a stranger to her offspring. And we've seen this again after the Messiah's time. Of course, after this Maccabean period, they're going to take back the temple. But once again, there was a war and all of the Israelites were chased out. And this is the way it is today. This is why you have Gentiles who are treading the courts. And they're going to keep treading the courts until the Gentiles time is over this time. But once again, the city is stranger to its offspring. The Israelites are not even allowed into Jerusalem talking about those who actually keep the law. Those that are actually obedient to the law are actually forbidden from coming into Jerusalem right now. There's only those who are Jewish who are down there now, you know, acting like they're keeping the laws when they are, in fact, doing them on the wrong days and in the wrong ways. But we cover that in another video. So this same event has happened a couple of times where they went in, took um, the the holy vessels, trodden down the city, um, took captives and all that stuff. And I guess the city went into mourning. All of this stuff has happened before. Yeah, several it's a times. repeating cycle. Yeah, where it starts, like, was, like this chapter starts with those who are willing to be obedient to the law. And once they start being obedient to the law, then the Gentiles come in and take all of their stuff and enslave them every time, destroy everything that they have every single time. And then what ends up happening is they end up calling on our father for help. And then they end up finding the law and then they end up going back towards obedience. And then they get back into a time of prosperity and they live, you know, happily until again, some rebellious people rise up and say hey we don't like living like this and then they start this downfall cycle over again it happens all the time mm -hmm. now we're in the period where we're actually calling upon our father and he's returning our law to us so we're still as of today or in this maccabean maccabean period and well we've always been like that every mm -hmm. every you know even back to the time of egypt it's a repeating cycle mm -hmm. it just keeps coming and going but this is the last time right at least here on this planet here the earth will burn up before we do this again you know this is the last time once humanity has been purged of all evilness and we return back to righteousness never again according to scripture never again will we have rebellious people that's going to stand up and try to lead us into disobedience mm -hmm. you know we we got the stones ready for them this time mm -hmm. that you know they're just not going to be able to do this again not right. th not anymore not after this one but let's go on her sanctuary was as barren as a desert. Her feasts turned into mourning, her Sabbaths into shame, her honor into contempt. Her could, you, could you imagine the feast days after they've taken everything from you? you? You the feast days come around and you and your Sabbath days coming around and you remembering the days when you know it was all about joy mm -hmm. and you know rejoicing. Now it's just a reminder of how far you have failed. That they've actually destroyed everything. Like I said, they destroyed the temple. They they basically turned it into their fortress. So on your feast days, you're looking toward the temple, and all you see is Gentiles, you know, mm -hmm. doing evil stuff. Yeah, that reminds me of the Book of Lamentations, which I guess talks about the first one. How it talks about how you know there are no more young maids or young men, you know, going to the feast. Um, the roads to the feasts have um, not been walked upon no more. Um, it's just a really sad, a really sad state mm -hmm. that the city is in after the father has came in and named them these people his. Mm -hmm. It's really bad. Yeah, we're, we're in that part now. The only difference is now we're building a spiritual temple. 
-hmm. So we're not focusing on what they're doing over in Jerusalem right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's being like we said, it's being trampled by Gentiles as we speak. Nobody's really caring about that now because we're thinking about our spiritual temple. But let's go on. Her dishonor became as great as her glory had been. Her joy turned into sadness. Again, I'll remind you that this started because there was those who wanted to rebel against the law. You know, they were had honor before that. But once they allowed people to steer them towards the Gentile ways of doing things, everything collapsed. And that's where they ended up. Mm -hmm. But let's go on. Then King Antiochus sent word throughout his entire kingdom that everyone should act like one people. Yeah. So everybody should be like the Gentiles. Now, notice he's not going to say, you know, everybody should be like the Israelites. Yeah, mm -hmm. everybody should get along. We should all get along, but we should all get along with y'all doing the way we do. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way it is now. Mm -hmm. People say, you know, it don't matter this, you know, it don't matter with all it. Well, if it don't matter, do it our way. Mm -hmm. Do it according to the Bible way. If it really don't matter, why does it not matter as long as we're doing it your way? Mm -hmm. But, you know, when it's come time to doing the way of the scripture, now it's a big problem. Right. And everybody should have something to say. Why is it like that? Giving up their local customs. Giving up their local the rules of the Bible, the covenant. The feast. The feast, which includes the feast mm -hmm. days, the Sabbath days. You know, everybody wants to be one people, celebrate the Sabbath days the way they do or don't celebrate them at all, mm -hmm. eat what they do. Everybody's just going to be Gentiles now. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles nations all readily accepted the king's command. Of course they would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Many Jews also willingly adopted the king's religion. They sacrificed to idols and violated the Sabbath. So here we are again doing this right here today. Sacrificing unto idols. We do those on the pagan holidays. We're going to get into a little bit of Christmas here and violating the Sabbath day. You know, people talk about, you know, how we're not supposed to keep the Sabbath day uh, and all of that. These are the same individuals here. They have been brought back into this time so they can learn their lessons from before. Hmm. The king sent messengers carrying letters to Jerusalem and the surrounding towns of Judah. He directed Jews to follow customs that had been unknown in the land. He banned the regular practices of entirely burned offerings, sacrifices, and drink offerings in the sanctuary. He banned the observance of Sabbaths and feast days. So here you have people now, you know. Down there in the church that will holler that we're not supposed to be doing this stuff. And right. we're not so, well, you notice here how and who it was that actually got rid of these mm -hmm. things, these practices. It wasn't our father that, you know, told mm -hmm. them to stop. Mm -hmm. It was these people here that got rid of the, the observance of the Sabbath day, got rid of the observance of the feast day. This all happened under the Gentile kings, mm -hmm. you know, and you had those who were Israelites rebellious Israelites that were actually helping them along, standing guard, telling on each other. This reminds me of Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. this, that's what the, the Feast of Kwanzaa is all about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you look at how that holiday was created, it was created by a guy named Ron Charisma or something like that. Mm -hmm. But turns out he was an FBI informant. Mm. Yeah. So he had the responsibility of identifying Israelites who would have otherwise been trying to keep biblical feast days and do things that would have gotten them their separation from the beast systems and allowing them to survive under our father's kingdom. Mm -hmm. He, as an FBI informant, actually turned those individuals in and then created a whole nother holiday to replace Sort of like what King Antiochus is doing. Yeah, absolutely. That's what the Feast of Kwanzaa is about. Like I said, we're talking about the reasons for the seasons. Well, we'll talk about that one there. Kwanzaa is a pagan festival created in 1966 for the reason of attracting people who wanted to grow spiritually into keeping yet another pagan holiday. The mm -hmm. only reason why he put all of those African symbols on the holiday was to specifically attract the black people mm -hmm. and make them come to get it. That's the same way with the Muslim faith. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just another government sanctioned religion that 
attracts people who don't otherwise want to be Catholic, especially people of color and bringing them into another religion that's going to steer them away from doing the feast days on the proper days and in the proper ways. Mm -hmm. their, their feast of Ramadan is a knockoff of Passover. Mm -hmm. They even sacrifice a lamb and everything. Wow. It's a knockoff. If the thing is, they don't do it on the right day. And that's why it's a government sanctioned religion, because as long as you're doing it on the wrong day, you nullify it and you turn yourself into a rebel. That's why the Jewish religion is a government sanctioned religion, because they're celebrating their festival days on the wrong day. Mm -hmm. And so the government is happy with them doing that. That's why they get promoted is because they're celebrating it on the wrong day. So anybody who's following the Jewish calendar is actually only a rebel. They're just a glorified Gentile. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says the Gentiles are trampling the courts in Jerusalem right now. Mm -hmm. It's because they're doing their feast days on the wrong days, basically making themselves or turning themselves into heathen. And by doing their feast days on the wrong day, all they have to do is just follow the Gregorian calendar. Or the rather Gregorian calendar or the Jewish calendar mm -hmm. or the Muslim calendar, any other calendar other than the sacred calendar. And you will end up making holy an unclean day and you will be making the, the holy day unclean. And that's exactly what those religions are doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is the reasons for these seasons. That's why you have a Christmas, which we ain't got into that one yet, but that's why you have a Kwanzaa and that's why you have a Ramadan and that's why you have even the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah, which they are celebrating on the wrong day is in order to steer people away from the Israelite way of doing things. You notice, you know, with all of these other religions being promoted, the only one that's not being promoted is those who are actually doing the feast the right way on the correct day. They're, right. the, they're the only ones that we don't want to hear about. Mm -hmm. And that's why I remind you guys, you should subscribe to this channel because there are those who don't want you to know the correct days. By doing the feast days on the correct days actually gives you the liberty that we were promised in the Bible. And that's what they're scared of. They can't really stop it. But they can make it so these videos don't show up in your feed and so that you don't know that any of this is going on. I'll remind you once again to subscribe, but let's go on. Yeah, and before we go, I just want to say one of the best ways that we know of that we use to stay in tune with the right days is the celestial calendar that you um, created. Well, praise our Father in heaven. We were actually able to do that. We've actually been teaching on the calendar since 2015. So we're not surprised that our father gave us the instruction for actually turning a clock into a sacred calendar. Mm -hmm. And you guys, shameless plug if you want to call it that, but you can actually get one of these over at coachingthefight.shop. Right. Um, it's really important as far as understanding how the sacred calendar works. It's a training aid that actually helps us to understand how the sacred calendar works. And once you figure it out, it does keep us on track as far as pointing us to when the new moons will be seen in the sky. It doesn't tell us the new moon. We still have to go out there and verify it. Um, just like they did in old, but it does give us the time when it is close. It tells us when it is we're supposed to be looking for the new moon. Right. And then all we have to do is go out there and verify it. And then just like Enoch tells us, we have to add those seasonal days. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about one of those here that's coming up. But we were talking about Kwanzaa here, and there was just a few more points that I wanted to bring out about Kwanzaa. Okay. You know, it talks about how it was a festival supposed to have been a um, holiday created for tradition and for unity and for values and all of that. Well, you notice that in that festival, they didn't actually point out Deuteronomy 28 at all. Didn't mm -hmm. make that a part of it because if they had brought that out, then it would have focused those Hebrews attention back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. But that was the purpose of Kwanzaa is to pull their attention away from the Bible and put it on some man made, made up holiday. Mm -hmm. That focuses on mostly on coming together as a community, but it de definitely doesn't deal um, a lot 
with um, scripture. Oh, yeah, it's, that's the one thing that it's not about, even mm-hmm. though it mentions the word faith, mm-hmm. is actually faith in one's own self. Right. You mm-hmm. know, but then, mm-hmm. And so that, that's the reason for that season. Kwanzaa is, like you said, to distract people and pull them, lead them astray. Yeah, you gave me the task of looking up each one of these days that uh, I think Kwanzaa has seven days. And I was surprised to find that uh, the meaning of each of the days definitely had nothing to do with scripture. Yeah, it was more about economics, more about uh, self-determination and self-will and and all of this when we should be focusing on our Father's will, Mm -hmm. you know, focusing on, you know, man's purposes and man's creativity instead of, like we said, staring us to the Bible. And again, you know, but it's not nobody should be surprised when they look at where this all started. Again, it started with an FBI informant with the goal of making sure that nobody was actually following the biblical feasts. Mm. They were keeping them away from doing it right. They would actually go into these places where these people would have otherwise been wanting to do things correctly and they were turning them into the FBI. Mm. Mm. But praise our Father in heaven. Now we have more scripture. Now we have more of the word that we can go by. And so we can understand how it is that we can do it without having to go down to one of these organized places that's going to turn us in, Mm -hmm. lead us astray and or turn us in. Mm -hmm. We can actually do it in the comfort of our own homes. All we need is our Bible. Right. And, you know, our father in heaven, hallowed be his name. We can pray directly to him without having to be part of any type of organization. Yeah. But anyway, let's go on. The sanctuary and its priests were to be defiled. Yeah. So they defiling the priests. You know, that reminds me of voodoo, how they make a person unclean. Mm-hmm. They don't even know. You know, they're doing stuff to make them unclean, have them drinking blood, you know, and, you know, just just doing all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. to defile them. And they're defiling the sanctuary, too. Mm-hmm. They should build new altars together with sacred precincts and shrines for idols. They should sacrifice pigs and other ritual emperor animals. So here's how they're defiling the sanctuary by actually sacrificing pigs. And they were commanded to do these things. Yeah, this is the king that's telling them to do these things, to to actually do this. The thing is, we still sacrifice a pig today on this holiday. We haven't really gotten into Christmas, but, you know, when we have the Christmas ham, that's actually the sacrifice of a pig. That's where it all comes from. Mm-hmm. But let's mm-hmm. go on. Mm. The Jews were no longer to circumcise their sons. They were supposed to make themselves repulsive to God by doing unclean and improper acts. Yeah. So wow. and they're still doing this today. You know, mm. that's why every one of these cell phones has a camera on it mm. so that you can sit there and break the second commandment all mm. day, snapping pictures of stuff you're not supposed to be doing. Not you making images of stuff we're not supposed to be doing. And then they are f- making sure that we eat our meat rare mm. with the blood still dripping out of it, mm-hmm. um, making sure that we are um, doing pagan holidays, Halloween and Easter and all of these other pagan holidays, they're doing this with the intention of making ourselves repulsive to God. They're doing it so that we anger him. That's the purpose of all of these things, to anger our father. I think one of the things um, also that they're doing uh, purposely, and we talked about this earlier, is how they're taking people who are not supposed to be considered priests and making them uh, the people who give us the Father's words. Putting common man mm-hmm. behind the pulpit. People mm-hmm. who were not supposed to be carrying the instruction. The Levites were the only ones that's supposed to be carrying the, the instructions. That's the way it is today. Understanding that the Levites are the firstborn males in the family. They are the ones who are supposed to be bringing us the truth. But we make those guys go get jobs while we put somebody else who cares nothing about the law behind the pulpit and tell him to preach to us. Mm -hmm. all because humanity as a whole is rebellious they want nothing to do with our father i'm talking about like i said humanity as a whole some of you guys and most of you guys listening to this video you know probably take offense to that but we're talking about humanity as a whole wants nothing to do with our father or his word and so they take those who are supposed to be 
bringing us the word and defile them, make them go get jobs afterwards. And then we put the common man behind the pulpit, just mm -hmm. a regular old Joe who's willing to harm himself, put himself in a bad position, which is what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, when he gets in there and he talks about, you know, not keeping the law, just like the Messiah told us, he will be counted least in the kingdom of heaven. So he's hurting himself in the long run, but he's willing to do so for fame, for glory, for money, mm -hmm. for popularity now. And so we'll put him in the pulpit and let him preach all day long and pay him to do so. All of this was intended to make them forget the law and change its regulations. Whoever didn't obey the king would die. Yeah, and so this is, like it worked. Said, it, and it's still going on today. It's still working till today. Mm -hmm. Still working today. We're doing the exact same thing today. Humanity as a whole is doing the same thing today, just so people will forget the law. And then you have those who want to sound pious, who will jump up even down in the comment section of this video and say that we're not supposed to be keeping the law this or we're not supposed to keep be keeping the law that. While when we read the book of Maccabees, there were people who was actually dying for the law. Mm -hmm. People who were putting their whole lives on the line just to keep the law will have people nowadays say it don't matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can say that this is probably one of the main reasons that this book was sort of counseled. Uh, because if you do read the story that we just read, it would definitely tell you that the father didn't counsel the law. People, man did. Man did. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's done it. One of the main men who did it now is Constantine. Mm -hmm. The head of the founder of the Catholic Church is the main guy now that has people believing that they're not supposed to be obeying. The commandments they're not they're supposed to be breaking the commandments no doubt he went as far as to tell them that you they were supposed to work on the sabbath day mm -hmm. you know don't be like the jews he said mm -hmm. actually go out and work on the sabbath day do something if it's no more than just cutting the grass go shopping on the sabbath mm -hmm. day and that's why you see today people who claim that their sabbath day is sunday strict adherence to the sunday sabbath day you'll find them down there still in their sunday best at walmart shopping mm -hmm. which is forbidden to do on the sabbath day is because they're following the rules of Constantine. They're following the rules of those who are rebellious against the law. They're actually breaking the law, which, like we said a few verses ago, just to anger the Lord. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to piss him off. And mm -hmm. so they're breaking the rules as fast as they can, going out and eating a bloody steak dinner on their Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. But let's go on. In this way, Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom. He appointed inspectors over all the people and commanded the Jewish communities to offer pagan sacrifices town by town. So here's the churches. Mm. Doesn't that sound like a church? Mm -hmm. He had put a, a he appointed an official. So here's a, a government sanctioned pastor, re religious leader, got his certification down at the seminary, has been appointed over the local church teaching the people in the congregation to rebel against the laws and to break them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by these pagan sacrifices, of course, he's talking about Christmas, Easter, and Halloween. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why you have one of these churches in every, every town today. But let's go on. Many Jewish people, those who abandoned the law, followed suit and did evil in the land. And by Jewish here, it's talking about people who are acting like Jews, right? Mm -hmm. So these are the people who have abandoned the law. Right. You know, they 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 want to look like Jews. They want to look like Israelites. They want to be like they want to be Israelite ish, but they have actually abandoned the laws. You know, they're actually doing opposite of the laws. Like I think of Passover, where back in the day they sacrificed a whole lamb for the Passover meal. Well, when you look at the Jewish community and their Passover meal, all they have is a bone on the plate. Mm. Okay. You didn't know that? No, I did not know that. Yeah. So they don't have a lamb. They just have a bone. Mm. And the thing about it, we were told that no bone was supposed to be broken. Right. So you think about that now. No bone is supposed to be broken for Passover. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to eat the whole lamb and no bone is supposed to be broken. Mm -hmm. But here for their Seder meal, what they call the Seder, supposed to be a very important meal. They intentionally broke the bone and put the bone on the plate. <laughs> I, 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 
I yeah. mean, how opposite could you get mm -hmm. than to actually put the bone on the plate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's what it means. These people are actually abandoning the law as fast as they can. I think one of the things that come to mind um, is when we learn that um, the kosher food is not so kosher. Yeah, they <laughs> not. It's not. You know, we're supposed to get all of the blood out of the meat. And, you know, they're not going through the whole process of mm -hmm. getting the meat, the blood out of the meat. They're just, you know, sprinkling a little bit of salt on it, just like they do down at Western Sizzler and all the other places and serving it as kosher food is not kosher. Kosher. And one guy did a video saying that kosher food is not kosher. They're not getting the blood out. He did scientific tests to get down to a laboratory where they actually um, put that meat under the microscope and saw that it still had blood in it. But let's go on. The king's inspectors drove Israel into hiding in every place of refuge they had available. So here, this is why they're in the wilderness today. They're still yet in hiding even till the this day, mm. you know, we're waiting for our Messiah to come on a cloud with these ten thousands of his saints in order to rectify all of this. Of course, this is going on now, mm -hmm. but these people are still in the wilderness until this until this rectification process actually starts. This is the reason for the season. But let's go on. Now, on the 15th day of Kislev in the year 145. They set up a disgusting and destructive thing on the altar for entirely burnt offerings in the sanctuary. So here we are getting into Christmas. Okay. The inspectors built other altars in the surrounding Judean towns. They burned incense at the door of houses and in the streets. When they found the lost scrolls, they tore them to pieces and burned them. So like we say, we're doing this today. Mm -hmm. People, they can't burn or tear up every Bible. Like they could do back then, you know, it wasn't that many scrolls available then. Now almost every household has a Bible in it, so you can't destroy every one of them. But what they do is they come and tell you that you're yeah. not supposed to be following and doing what it tells you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell us that the, the Messiah, who was the Word made flesh, who was the Law made flesh, was mm -hmm. murdered on the cross, and now we don't have to worry about the Law anymore. Right. Basically, they killed him, mm -hmm. and so now we can do whatever we want to do. <laughs> That's that's the message. That's you know? wild, but I used to believe that. Yeah. But, you know. A lot of people still do. But, you know, we see where this is all coming from. Mm -hmm. If anyone was caught in possession of a copy of the covenant scroll, or if anyone kept to the law, that person was condemned to death by royal decree. So now they just marginalize you. Yeah. And now they just... Um, Take your YouTube channel out of the algorithm so mm -hmm. people don't get to see it. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, when you go in to actually try to see this kind of content on YouTube, you're bombarded with people talking about foolish stuff and stuff that ain't true and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing. It's the only thing now we can praise our father is that they're not actually killing people. Mm -hmm. They're just silencing them. Or shaming them. And shaming them. Mm -hmm. They were unrelenting in attacking Israelites, all those who were identified as law observant month after month throughout the towns. Attacking them every mm -hmm. month, you know. Mm -hmm. And so all they really got to do is look for those who are keeping the Sabbath day mm -hmm. or looking for looking for those who are blowing their trumpets. One of the laws is where we're supposed to blow our trumpets on a new moon day. Mm -hmm. So that's where they could be getting this month for month thing is they will wait for the new moon to appear mm -hmm. and then listen out for who's going to blow their trumpet mm -hmm. and then go hunt them down like dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the 25th day of the month, they offered sacrifice on the altar, built over the altar for entirely burnt offerings. So here is Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we're getting into the Christmas season. But here is their Christmas Day right here. Mm -hmm. Even before Christ was ever born, mm -hmm. this is how they celebrated Christmas. Mm -hmm. Christmas was in effect way before the Christ ever came to the earth. Mm -hmm. And this is Antiochus Epiphanes doing his Christmas Day celebration on the 25th day of the ninth month. In keeping with the decree, they killed women who had circumcised their sons. They hanged the infant boys from their mother's necks. The king's agents also killed the families of the women as well as those who had performed the circumcision. So 
they're doing this on Christmas Day, actually going out and hunting down the people who have circumcised their children mm. on this this 25th day of the ninth month. Wow. They actually sacrificed a pig on this day. Mm. And like I said, that's where they get the whole idea of the Christmas ham from mm -hmm. is the sacrificing of a kid of, of a pig. We don't like to use that word sacrifice. Because it implies some type of ritual or act, but sacrificing just means to give up something. Right. So when I invite you over for a barbecue, I've actually sacrificed that food for you, brought mm -hmm. it out and gave it over to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what the book of Revelation is talking about when it said they're eating food sacrificed unto idols. They're they're eating this these foods that were sacrificed for these gods that they're worshiping on the 25th day of the ninth month back there in Antiochus Epiphany's time. And that's one of the main staples. You know, it seems that each holiday has their main staples. When we think of uh, Easter, we think of Easter eggs. We think of, uh, you know, cakes and stuff like that. Uh, Thanksgiving, you think of turkeys. But definitely for Christmas, you think of that Christmas ham. Mm -hmm. And this is um, it's amazing how it goes is related back to back to scripture yeah, that's where it all started from but like we said it was going on way before the messiah ever came down to the earth all right let's go on but many in israel stood strong and they resolved in their hearts not to eat emperor food so like we said all of this is going on today so you have those who now are standing strong mm -hmm. and refuse to eat this impure food refusing to be defiled refuse to break the law refuse to be rebels even though they are yet still being persecuted by those who want to be rebellious mm -hmm. they chose to die rather than to be defiled by the food or to dishonor the holy covenant and they did die yep they killed them they came in on one of the sabbath days um one of the first sabbath days after this war got kicked off in earnest they came in and slaughtered them because one of the rules of the sabbath day is not to make war mm -hmm. but you know they've said you know what the following sabbath days they said you know we're not making war we're making defense mm -hmm. and so when they came in the second time to annihilate them on the sabbath day they actually fought back and they slaughtered them. Mm -hmm. A great anger came against Israel. And yep, so they actually started this whole huge war. That's why we have a Maccabean story is because these people actually fought back and they won. Mm -hmm. We jump ahead a little bit in the story. Um, I will advise anybody who wants to hear a great story to listen to or read all of the books of Maccabees. But we're going to jump all the way over to um, Maccabees chapter 10 and we're going to hear how this actually ended up. Okay. Matter of fact, let's read verse 1. The Maccabee and his companion with the Lord leading them recovered the temple and the city. Yeah. So this is actually the leader of this group. Is mm -hmm. one of these sons who were a part of the initial rebellion led the army and they actually took back the temple. Mm -hmm. They demolished the altars that the foreigners built near the marketplace as well as the sacred precincts. Yeah, so remember they had actually turned the Jerusalem into their fortress, mm -hmm. built another altar. So they tore all of that down and took it back. They cleansed the temple and made another altar. Then they struck flints to make fire and they offered up sacrifices after a lapse of two years and they prepared incense lamps and the sacred loaves. So again, after they had, after the Gentiles had forced them to stop doing these offerings, now they're actually about to start up again now that they've taken the temple back. And this and, happened, I guess this went on about two years. Well, the war lasted for about two years. Mm -hmm. So here it is now after this two years is up, have they actually taken back the temple? After they had done these things, they bowed to the ground and pleaded with the Lord that they would not experience such misfortunes again. But if they should ever sin, they would be disciplined by him with fairness and not turn over to the slanderous and barbaric nations. Yeah. So, again, remembering that it was the rebellious Jews that started this, mm -hmm. the rebellious Israelites who didn't want to keep the law in the first place were the ones who actually got this ball rolling by going over and making a league with the Gentiles. Actually went out and seeked 
out the um, Gentiles to uh, make a league with them. Yeah, no, they were Gentiles minding their own business. And here comes some Israelites talking about, hey, we want to be like y'all. Mm -hmm. And so. Sort of like what we're doing today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, but the only difference is now they're not physically killing those mm -hmm. who keep the law. They're mm -hmm. just, like we said, silencing them, persecuting them, making it really difficult. Got their families turning on them mm -hmm. and, and, and all of this stuff going on mm -hmm. with the same effect. And that's to make them either give up on keeping the law or not being able to be a witness for others who would otherwise want to keep the law mm -hmm. basically just shutting them down mm -hmm. all right let's look at verse five on the anniversary of the temple's defilement by foreigners on that very day the sanctuary was purified on the 25th of the month which is Kislev. so here we have the reason for the feast of dedication mm. this is where hanukkah as people call it, actually got started from is because on the anniversary of back there when they sacrificed the pig, when they uh, on the altar, when they actually, you know, killed those who had circumcised their children and hung them around their neck mm -hmm. on the very anniversary is the time when they actually or we actually celebrate this feast of dedication. Mm -hmm. And it should be noted that our Messiah actually kept the feast as well we see him doing that over in john chapter 10 and verse 22 so that sort of gets rid of those who are saying that uh, the messiah did away with all of that yeah he he actually taught his disciples to keep the festivals including the feast of dedication mm -hmm. otherwise he would have not made that eight our walk into Jerusalem. Right. You have to remember, he didn't live in Jerusalem. He didn't have a house in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He lived about eight hours away by walk. So anytime he had to come to a festival day, him and his whole family, the disciples and everybody had to make an eight hour trek. You know, so he ain't there for just no reason right. walking around on Solomon's porch mm -hmm. on the Feast of Dedication. He actually gave a sermon on that festival day when he told the disciples that he and his father were the same individual mm -hmm. that's the one he also told them how his sheep would hear his voice well that holy day is actually to start on the anniversary of that christmas celebration uh -huh. so again here is the reason for the season the reason for the season right mm -hmm. so and so let's look at verse six they celebrated eight days with cheer in a manner like the Festival of Booths, remembering how during the previous Festival of Booths, they had been roaming about in mountains and caverns like animals. Yeah. So while they couldn't, for the last two years, they couldn't celebrate mm -hmm. the Feast of Tabernacles because the temple had been defiled. Right. Well, now to make up for it, they actually have two tabernacle celebrations, one in the fall mm -hmm. and one here at the end of fall, the very beginning of winter for the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah. Right. So again, here is the reason for the season. Wow. It's to remember what, it, what they actually did to us way back then. That's why we're doing it, mm -hmm. you know. And so let's see how, how it is that they celebrate it. So they held ivy wands, beautiful branches, and also palm leaves, and they offered hymns to the one who had made the purification of his own temple possible. Yeah. So here we have the palm branches in their hands, mm -hmm. and they're walking around rejoicing, just like they did during the Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles right. All right, let's finish out this section. They voted and issued a public decree that all Jews should celebrate these days each year. Talking about those in Israel. So that's talking about all of Israel mm -hmm. are to celebrate this festival every year. Yeah, this festival, not uh, Kwanzaa. Or Christmas. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the manners concerning Antiochus, called Epiphanies, came to an end. Yeah, so there you have it. That is the reason for the season. If you got anything out of this video, please put it in the comments section. Yeah, we love hearing about hearing um, the comments from you guys. Um, they not only help the people who read the comments, like me, I'm a comment reader, but they um, they help us also. Yeah, and I remind you guys, if you like hearing biblical content, to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have that bell notification button pushed so you can get this information as we put it out. And Else you're rolling the dice on whether YouTube will show it to you or not. 
right? And always share, you know, share this content with not only social media, but those people that you are around. Yeah, anybody you love and want to see make through this tribulation or this apocalypse, you might want to help them to get on board because we win this war this time. Mm -hmm. We win this time. Right. We've taken a lot of hits throughout the years, but we will come out on top this time and evil will never have another chance to do this to us again. So share with those you love. Be subscribed. Leave a comment and pray for us. Shalom.